All right. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. It is, I don't think I even told you, it's International Stuttering Awareness Day. Okay. Awesome. That's a, that's, that's a day. And um, for today, I'll be interviewing Emily, right? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I'll be interviewing Emily and asking a few questions about stuttering. I'm more interested to hear about what you do for work. I kind of have an idea, but I want to hear about how this can cross over. I felt it too now. How this can cross over into uh, how people overcome their stutter, which I truly believe um, a lot of what you do, even though I don't know, is going to cross over a lot. So um, I'll hand this over to you. Just give yourself a little in- a little introduction and what what you do for work and things like that. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, hello everyone. I'm Emily. I am a women's empowerment and mindset coach. I help women who are ready to reclaim their power, reclaim their voice, own their truth, and really step into their highest potential. And a lot of the work comes down to getting to know yourself on a really deep level getting to know your values, what really matters to you, so that you can own your truth, like I said earlier. And a lot of it comes down to self-love, self-acceptance, trust and honoring yourself. And I think this is where it really connects because any, any problem that we're facing in life can be solved when we come to a place of deep, unconditional love and acceptance for ourselves. And I've seen a bit of what you do and what you talk about and it you talk a lot about authenticity right yeah and I think that's a big key part in the work that I do as well like knowing who you are what matters to you and from that place you can really own your truth and speak your truth yeah more comfortably and easily right 100% (laughs) awesome okay um all right so yeah you talked about some things that kind of dove into what you work on people with, mm-hmm. which I'm excited about. When you talked about your val, talked about your values, that's such a big aspect mm-hmm. of becoming authentic. Because I often get people on my calls saying, like, not on my initial call, but if they're week one or week two into the program, there might be a fear that will pop up that will say. I don't want to turn into someone that I'm not like how do I know when I'm being authentic and like how will I know like what the authentic me is if I'm not truly if I've never really lived there for a long period of time and I think a lot of that comes down to your values and getting very very clear on what true what you truly truly value Um, so in your work being an empowerment coach what what is the would like what would you say the end goal result is with that so it really depends on each client that i work with some people come to me because they are not happy in their current job and they want to truly tune into their passions and either start a business or just find work that's more aligned for them because that's a big part of our life and a lot of people are unfulfilled and unsatisfied in what they're doing. So the end goal for a lot of these women is to feel, to get to an empowered place where they can make empowering decisions related to their career or to this business that they want to start or just something that they truly care about and want to pursue. For other women, it's really about relationships and building authentic, deep relationships with people, not having surface level connections. Yeah. For other women, it's, having a lot more confidence showing up and that can be related to their physical body as well a lot of people want to lose weight and feel just better in their skin in their body in this vessel that we all have and in an empowered place taking empowered decisions from a place of loving yourself to get to a better place in your body so the end result changes for everyone it can be you know encompassing all of these things that i just mentioned because we do work on all the areas of everyone's life like their career their money and just get to the bottom of all these limiting beliefs and and break through them that's amazing so how 
say you have a person who wants more intense deep connections with people and say you're working with another another client who wants to make more money wants to get aligned with the job that they want to have or whatever it may be how does finding your true values and how how does understanding your values work for all of them at the same time yeah great question so i think that once you know your values what truly matters to you and we can like you know bring it down to like five key values or five key words that people work with if that's like freedom for somebody then obviously you're going to want to be in a career that allows you to have freedom or be in relationships that allow you to have freedom as well so once you know those values and you truly embody them things just start unlocking for you the opportunities come into your world that fit those values as long as you're holding <laughs> holding on to those values and not yes. not um, breaking your boundaries so I think with value work there's also boundary work it's like now that I know my values I need to to hold myself accountable to sticking to them and not giving in to other relationships or opportunities that don't fit with those yeah. so value work boundary work and then once you're really strong with that the opportunities just come into your life yeah i absolutely love that because i truly believe like this this sounds crazy to a lot of people but i truly believe once you're at least for a person who stutters i'm talking from that perspective once you are living aligned with your values and living authentically the stutter there's there's no pain connected to the stutter and i'll i'll explain that kind of briefly here is like the st the stutter itself is neutral like it's just a repetition of words or a blockage of words there is no inherent good or bad with it it's our own perception of it that's going to cause us to have pain cause us to feel bad about it so the stutter itself the su, 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 that's just that's just a sound there's there's no good or bad with that and if someone were just to su, su, stutter like this every once in a while or every few few words it wouldn't impact them emotionally where it gets where the pain comes from where the suffering is is when you allow the stutter to dictate your personality and dictate your life choices and dictate who you talk to because there you are not living aligned with your values i have this exercise that i bring pe bring people through is they label out all of the environments that are their most stutter heavy environments where it's the most se most severe then they go through their top 10 value top 10 value list and rank each value one to ten of how much they're honoring this value in these environments and always in these environments they're honoring their, their values the, the least meaning they're being the most inauthentic in these environments that they're stuttering the most so not only is the most pain com coming in these environments but they're actually stuttering the most when they're living inauthentically so all the work with me with my clients is how can we live authentically even with the stutter because that takes the takes the pain away from the stutter and you actually stutter a lot less when you are aligned with yourself how does that what i kind of just talked about how does that relate to you or do you do you see any connection with how you work yeah as you were speaking something was coming to mind uh quite a few of the women that I have worked with or work with have gone through some kind of abuse and for most of their life they identified with the abuse or with the shame that they carried and they they just completely identified with that and it held them back for so long and the moment that they're able to realize that that doesn't identify them now or <laughs> never really identified it identified who they were as a person the moment they realize that and realign with their values and their truth today and where they want to go 
everything shifts. So I think you were talking a little bit about the pain associated to it or the pain that someone kind of gives themselves when they attach to it. So that happens with a lot of the clients that I work with too. They're so attached to the pain or they're just holding on to the pain of the situation or the thing, whereas we don't need to give meaning to it. Yeah. So I think that was a really powerful thing you were you were talking about as well. Yeah. And there's something you're saying right now, which is like the attachment to the pain. And what what this reminds me of is like the attachment to like being a person who stutters. If you're going through 20 years of your life as a person who stutters, you're going to build an identity of like this this is who I am and then you are form form lim, li, limiting beliefs of what you're capable of and I, I've talked about this story before but I've worked with a client who who you he had so many limiting beliefs with his stutter saying people won't like me because I stutter I'll get ignored because I stutter I don't have friends because I have a stutter and that attachment to these beliefs were somehow keeping him safe because this allowed him to have the excuse in his brain that if I just didn't have a stutter, I would be amazing. Every, everyone would love me. And the thing is with, with this is like this served as a reason for him not to overcome his stutter because it was his blanket. Because if he did overcome his stutter, and he wasn't stuttering as much and people still didn't like him he had a really that would hurt a lot more do do you see anything like that in your work mm -hmm. as well that that is so powerful what you just said i actually shared something very similar on instagram the other day how some people don't want to heal or are afraid to heal because they will no longer have that excuse for why they're not reaching their full potential and so it's safer for them to stay with all of the limiting beliefs because at least now they know that things are, it's, it's not my fault, you know, things are just holding me back. This is how I am. This is what happened to me and I'm stuck in this place. Or at least these are the problems I can talk about with people and this is what I identify with and this is why I'm not at the next level. Yeah. And so it's, a, it's so huge when you start realizing all the things that you're allowing to hold you back and everything is created like self-created yeah. so there's a, a quote from i think carolyn meese i don't know if you know her but she has an awesome show on gaia called sacred power and she talks about this how people just choose not to heal because it's safer for them to stay in the old issues and old problems than to step out and heal themselves because then what are they going to do like the, yeah. the, the sky is the limit yeah. and that's scary so yeah i don't know if i answered your yeah, question 100% but <laughs> did. yeah and that reminds me of again some something that i saw i think on instagram or facebook a few days ago is like your brain i forget what part of the brain but a part of your brain's only um only job is to keep you safe or maybe 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 the full the full part of the brain is just like survival mode and it recognizes i'm 23 years old and even though it wasn't enjoyable to be repressive it wasn't enjoyable to hide away from situations i'm still alive so this plan i i had worked of avoiding like this kept me safe because Every, like every time you avoid a situation the reason why you do is because of fear and if you never face that fear you just assume your your brain assumes there is danger there there is some type of pain there so avoiding it and developing an identity with like survival this is what i do for survival it makes it so much harder to go against the grain of that and going into what you fear because your brain honestly thinks you may die because you never face that um when you were talk when you were talking that made me remember I didn't even ask about like what got you into coaching or what got you into helping women feel empowered like what's what's kind of your your story with that 
There are two parts. One part is that I've always enjoyed helping people. Like most of my life before going into coaching, I was in teaching positions or always client facing positions, solving problems, helping people do better or grow their companies. And so I always enjoyed helping people, but but the clients or the people that I was working with weren't aligned for me. So I never felt like I was really tapping into the potential that I had inside of me. So I always knew I could do more. I just didn't really know what that was. And I discovered coaching maybe three years ago. And that just started, you know, this whole domino effect because I was just meeting person after person after person that led me into the coaching industry. And then my niche has changed over time, but I feel more aligned than ever right now doing empowerment and mindset coaching, mostly because for most of my adult life, I felt so lost, so confused, so disconnected from who I was. I had social anxiety. I didn't like going out and meeting new people, although I forced myself to because I knew that I had to try. (laughs) And um, I was always doing work that never lit me up. And so I know what that pain feels like of of knowing that you could do so much more, but not knowing what that is. And just that lack of fulfillment, that lack of passion. It's just like not the way to live your life. And so coming out of that, like I'm so passionate about helping women realign to their truth because that's what we're here to do. Like we're here to get to know ourselves for real, like minus the conditioning and the limiting beliefs and, and society and what our family says. It's about getting to know who you are as the individual and what your values are again and what you want out of this life and going for it. But a lot of people live in fear. So <laughs> I'm here to like help people bust out of that fear because yeah. there's so much more on the other side. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, I, I always say this thing 100%. So I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm trying to switch it. I said, def- I said definitely. definitely. My whole body wanted to say 100%. Though. Say it. That's your thing. <laughs> that's, I've got to be authentic 100%. <laughs> um, I think we got about five minutes. <laughs> um, I completely agree with that state you talk about where like nothing lights you up. Mm-hmm. And like you said, there's not a way to live. Like it truly is not. It's legitimately li- living like black and white. And then when you are connected and when you feel like you're living aligned with yourself, it's colors. Yeah. It's just vi- vi- vibrant colors. And the thing is, like, I think the, ma- the most painful part about that type of life that you can live, whether it be not living aligned with your purpose or what, whatever you may be helping someone with, or when someone is hiding their true selves because of their stutter, is, like, I think the most painful part is losing the curiosity. I feel like once you lose your cur- your curiosity of other people, of the world, of experiences, of going out, and that kind of energy dies inside of you, it's so easy to slip into like a, de- a depressive state. Or maybe this depressive, this depressive state spouts out this um, lack of curiosity. But that's one thing I've seen in my life. It's every time I've been in a more not aligned state, I just become so self so self absorbed self absorbed with myself and selfish with my own thoughts that I lose curiosity of other people and that lack of curiosity stops you from having true connection and I I believe if you're not get if you don't feel a true con, true connection and if that's not a thing in your life there's gonna be unfulfillment like if you cannot connect with I think I think I was right on the five minutes. Um, let's finish this up real, real quick. Is there uh, is there any is there anything you'd like to say um, regarding what we were talking about, or maybe even um, what your thoughts on stutter on stuttering? Um, any, anything you'd want to talk about? <laughs> let's see if we can do this before it starts to pour. Yeah. I am not sure about what I'd like to say regarding stuttering I don't have you know much experience meeting people who stutter but 
I'm so happy that you're doing this work and helping people understand that there's so much more for them out there, so many possibilities and a life with a loss, a lot less fear and a lot less anxiety is possible. So that's pretty much the message that I have for everyone is like a life without, okay, I won't say without any fear or anxiety, but a life where that's not dominating everything for you is a hundred percent possible. And if that means, you know, seeking out a mentor, a coach, a practitioner to help you get there, there's no shame in that. And yeah, I just want everyone to know that their dreams are so possible. So yes. <laughs> and if someone wants to check, check. Oh, they can find me at Emily dot. No, sorry. Emily Jones dot co on Instagram. That's also my website. And yeah, that's it. All right. And for me, you, you know where to find me. If you want to book a free call, um, see if I can, I, I can help you out, overcome your stutter. Click the closest link down in the description fill in some information and um i'll hop on a call with you that was emily it was a pleasure awesome, and we, we got out just just in time just on time so uh i love you guys and see you soon right on okay, awesome. Fucking